everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and tonight is the seventh night of Hanukkah, so we are going to go dye some more yarn. But please make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. But if you have missed a video, I do have a playlist of all of the Chemnitz Hanukkah videos, so you can go back and watch them after you have finished tonight's video. For tonight, I wanted to create some kind of repeating or semi-repeating colorway, and I had a whole plan that I changed immediately before filming this video. And I'll show it and talk a little bit about what my original plan was. Uh, but instead, I decided to do some immersion dyeing to create a variegated speckled colorway in my catering steam pan. And now, let's go take a look at the colors. Today we are going to play with the Dharma Acid Dyes in Frozen Blue, Electric Violet, Pink Orchid, Cabernet, Aubergine, Dark Navy, and True Black. And I debated a lot the type of colorway I wanted to create with these colors. Originally, I think my idea was to try to do something variegated, alternating the brights with the deeper colors. Uh, I thought that this would be really, really fun, and this is a type of colorway I may want to do at some point. But since I am doing this colorway with applying dry powder onto the yarn immersion style on the stovetop, I was afraid that I'd sort of cover up these brights and that the final color would feel more one color overall. It would feel a lot more subtle than what I am hoping for. So I think this is something I will revisit with liquid dyes at some point, but I really did enjoy how we went from pink to blue this way and then more pink to blue going the other way. I thought that that was just a fun way to lay out the colors. Instead, I plan to do some tone on tone work. I am going to dye the base with these primarily three colors and then use the darker version of a blue, a purple, sort of a burgundy for some uh, speckles on top of each of those areas. With some black thrown in, I'm not sure, we'll see how, where I feel like I want the placement, whether it's a tiny bit all over or whether it's sort of at the interface of the colors. We'll see what the colors want us to do. But this colorway is still super, super fun. It's a little bit different than like what I had originally sketched out, but it feels more me and I'm less nervous about tackling this. I think that when you're developing a new colorway, it is important to consider what you want and have a little bit of a vision, but also have some flexibility. So when you start to actually play with the colors and see how the colors are performing with the technique you do, you're doing, sort of lean in to what the colors want to do a little bit. And then that can help you get something that you're really excited about. Um, and so, you know, I have my new plan here, but I might change my mind when we see how these colors are performing on the yarn. But anyway, let's go get ready to dye some yarn. <laughs> dye some yarn. <laughs> I am pre-soaking our 10 gram mini skeins of Wool to Dye Force Platinum, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, in some plain tap water for a hour or so, a couple hours maybe. Uh, this isn't just some plain tap water, there's no acid in here yet, and we have a combination of both fingering and DK weight yarn. And then over here, pre-soaking in some water with vinegar, I have some Knit Picks Swish DK yarn, which is 100% Superwash Merino. And this yarn I'm going to have on hand to use as a yarn mop, to wipe any dye off of my gloved fingertips from when I am speckling and applying these dye colors in the pan, so we leave no dye behind. Here in my full-size catering steam pan that is four inches deep, I have 300 grams of yarn. And I don't know if I'm gonna add all of this liquid, but this water was eight cups of water with three tablespoons of white vinegar. And I'll see how much of it I want to add. I want the yarn to be like at the surface like this, but I also want to be able to squish to move some of the color through, especially with those first three colors. So I've added, I would say about six cups of this mixture 
to our yarn. And now I'm gonna turn on the heat and go put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask with P100 filters, safety glasses, and gloves so we can start adding the color. All right, I am gonna start with the electric violet, which is one of my favorite colors ever. Unfortunately, it is a lot more expensive now, but Dharma does price their acid dyes out such that the, the price that you pay is proportional to the actual cost, which I appreciate. And so I don't mind if some of the speckles here remain clearly. Okay, since I'm dying to pans, I may need to do it a tiny bit faster uh, to move the color through, but part of the goal is to see sort of where we end up with each of the three main colors. Actually, I like this a lot, um, but I think next time, and you see we do have a tiny bit of breaking, uh, next time when I add a little more, I'm gonna come in and sort of move it a little bit faster. And so this is part of what prototyping can be about sometimes. Okay, this time I'm going to come in with some of our pink orchid. And before I do the other pan, this time I'm going to come and move the dye around. Now some colors have different rates that they absorb and bind to the color. Some do this faster, some do this slower. But one thing I enjoy about using dry powders as like the paint is that there is an unevenness to it. There's a tonal nature to our colors. And then frozen blue can strike pretty quickly. I'm going a little bit heavy with it. Okay, and my fingers were a little damp, which meant that the dye was sticking to them a little bit. There we go. Uh, if you don't want the dyes to stick to your fingers, uh, that you do want to make sure that you dry them off really, really well. But now I am moving this color through, but I want to do at least a layer that I'm happy with with all of these colors first before we start doing the more speckling on, and we will be doing more rounds of these colors. You can kind of see that they aren't going through all the different layers. Okay, I'm going to come back in with a little bit more of our violet, and this time do it more straight away, which is gonna help me get these colors to penetrate a little bit deeper on to the yarn. And I don't mind if the colors blend some or not. I mean, clearly, clearly, oh, the purple is now going further, but clearly we will need to do multiple layers of the colors, but that's something that we can work on as we move forward. Now, let's start adding on some speckles. Okay, this time, let's start with the dark navy. I'm running low on this color too. And I'm just going to add not a lot. Not even all over necessarily. Just some navy speckles on top of the blue. Got some aubergine. Then I'm going on top of the purple. I have no idea if this will show up or not. This one may be a bit more subtle, but it's hard to say until the colors are dry. Like I kind of see it. And then I've got some cap, whoop, that went a little heavier than I expected. A little bit of Cabernet. On to our pink. Part of the reason why I wanted to do color on color speckles is that if there is some spread and these deeper colors that I add influence the color beneath, we still maintain some of our purple, uh, pink, and blue versus if I had done sort of the opposite direction colors, then we could have ended up with everything feeling purple, which, I mean, I wouldn't entirely mind, but I do want to keep some of this color that we have going on with just some little extra pops. And then finally, I have a little bit of some true black, which for now, 
and I might do something different later on. I am really just focusing mostly on the blue and the, yeah, I'll do a little bit all over. More on the blue and the pink, a little bit less on the purple. I am very curious if I will be able to tell the difference between the black speckles versus the other colored speckles. I don't know if I will be able to distinguish that on the finished yarn, but that's actually something I'm very curious about. Yeah, I honestly can't tell how much of a difference these different dark colors are making. I can say on the pink, I do see some Cabernet versus black feel, but again, it's so subtle, it's hard to say for sure. I'm very excited. Um, but anyway, I am now going to wait 10 minutes before we flip this because I want to give these darker colors a chance to set uh, before we flip to add color to the other side. Okay, I now want to check. Ooh, I see color there. Nope, no color there, no color there. Uh, here was a larger patch, and I'm still seeing some Cabernet. Yeah, okay, the Cabernet is going to take a bit more time, it looks like. Okay, so I think I'm going to give things another 10 minutes, because again, I don't want things to spread out too much uh, when we flip. It's been another... 10 minutes, there's still some hints. Uh, just of some, some of that Cabernet. I'm gonna need to do, think a little less is more with that Cabernet. Let's go ahead and flip. I think that some of the uh, spread, especially from that Cabernet, could be, maybe I didn't have it as fine uh, as I was adding it. Um, compared to some of the other colors, but we will keep that in mind as we go through to add more color. And so now, great, I got some really great saturation with the purples, but I am trying to get the most pastel areas visible so we can start layering on more color. I put my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves back on so we could start dyeing the other side. This project will likely require one or two more flips after this second round, uh, but those other flips may involve just the main three colors versus our speckles. We'll see how it feels as we go on. My goal is to maintain some amount of our brights and to not have everything feel more muted, but again, I'm going to see where these dyes take me and I'm really enjoying um, these like extra little mixes that the color on color layers are bringing us. It is important to keep in mind that different colors of acid dyes bind at different rates. Some strike really quickly, some take more time, and so that could be why some things take a little bit longer at times to strike. Uh, and this is figuring out which premix colors strike fast versus slow is something that I get a better feel for over time. Uh, for example, those anything fluorescent is likely going to take more time to strike. Uh, and then certain blues take an extra long time to strike as well. So trial and error helps you to figure this out. But I really enjoy painting my yarn directly using dye powder, even if sometimes it means I have a little less control over the final color, uh, because sometimes the intensity, it's hard to like do this technique and get a pastel, so sometimes the intensity is determined by that mixture of the color. But I also really like this because I can start playing with the colors I'm using in a pan, see the direction they're taking me, and then lean into that. And that is a process I enjoy a lot. But anyway, I waited 10 to 20 minutes in between each flip to make sure that our speckles could be nice and set. And if the water level looked a little bit low, then I added on some of that leftover water with vinegar that I had mixed up at the very beginning. At the end of the time lapse, I added eight cups of water with three tablespoons of white vinegar, and then I let everything heat for 20 minutes. And now, let's look and see 
The dye math is clear and our yarn is beautiful. So now I am going to remove the yarn and set it aside to cool so we can wash it. Now as for our yarn mops, we have two. Um, I'm actually gonna come and bring them in to this dye bath right here. This may cause some of these colors to spread a bit, but I actually don't see any colors coming out right now. Um, there was already vinegar in here, but no heat applied yet. Okay, a little bit of color is coming out and moving, but I kind of hold this still. Um, I'm now going to heat this for 30 minutes. One of the reasons for doing things this way is because I had this hot pan set up and I had more yarn on the other burner. See back here you can see a set of DK that I'm about to remove and finish up. And since I like the liquid in these pans to cool off a bit before I change it, if I'm gonna change it, this is just a convenient way to use what I already have set up to set the color. But alternatively, you can definitely steam set this in a steamer basket for 30 minutes. I am just going to use the immersion heat to set the color. I was not recording when I thought. Uh, we have some spread of colors, but we also still have some speckles. So some of the colors set pretty quickly, which is fun. Uh, I started to say that I'm now going to um, go let this cool. I'll wash this off camera. And for the next round that I dye completely off camera, um, not, I mean, the yarn mop was dyed off camera, but I mean the main color way. The yarn mops for that will be Knit Pick Stroll, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And so I am gonna use two skeins of that uh, for the next bit, and probably will choose to set it the same way. But if I choose to steam it instead, I'll let you know. There is a tiny, tiny bit of pink left in this water, but I'm actually gonna let it cool off a bit and then go add it to a huge mason jar and reuse this water to dye my next batch, which, as I said, will be all off camera. I did consider doing another time lapse of the dyeing, but since we just had one when I was finishing up the first round, I decided to not film another one. I am really, really happy so far that I changed up my original idea because I think that if I was going for less speckles but more true variegated with small strips of color, using seven different colors, it would be hard to get the kind of coverage that I wanted without letting some of those deeper colors overtake the brights a bit more than what I really, really wanted. Uh, so I'm glad that I shifted and we haven't washed yet, but in some places I do see difference between like navy and black, for example. Uh, so we'll see how much of a difference we can tell with all the other colors, but I'm very excited to see this dry and to see how vibrant or maybe a tiny bit more muted it really does end up. But anyway, the yarn is cool, so let's go wash it. Let's wash our yarn. Oh, I am so happy with this color dye. Now, I wasn't specifically trying to go for something that felt like broken violet, but y'all do know that a combination of pink, purple, and blue is what I like a lot. But anyway, I added some flare dish soap to this. And I had just mentioned in the talking head that I can tell the difference between the navy and the black over on the blue. I am not sure about the other two colors yet. Uh, I haven't checked that closely. But of course, we will look very closely at the end of this video. I see a hint of some blue in the water, so we will check our next rinse. And let's see. Give it a nice, good rinse. Yeah, I mean, I'm not seeing anything that concerns me. Um, I am gonna go ahead and rinse this a couple more times uh, to remove the rest of that soap. But then I'm gonna put this through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. 
For our second round of yarn mops, I decided to treat them a little bit differently. I kept just the pink orchid, electric violet, and frozen on one, and then the aubergine, cabernet, navy, and black on the other. And I think that they are both really beautiful. Once I finish up this round of dyeing, I am going to go ahead and place these in each of them separately into one of the pans to set it in that water versus setting up a steamer basket. Uh, so I thought it would just be fun to show a nice before with our pops of white. So then we can see an after with the finished yarn. For Hanukkah night seven, I shifted my vision right before I started dyeing this colorway. I considered doing seven colors sort of split a little bit like this, alternating brights and darks, but then like, I, I don't know, it just, it didn't feel right and I was really afraid that the deeper colors when I tried to get them saturated would overtake the brighter colors and I didn't want everything to feel muted and so I shifted and instead we went for this more bright purple, pink, and blue yarn that has four different colors of speckles on it. And now we're finally going to go and zoom in and see if we can actually tell that I used multiple different colors of speckles. With white balance stuff, this might be hard, but here is some black and here is some navy. There is 100% a color difference there for me. It is subtle. Far back, you don't really necessarily tell, but I can tell when I zoom in. In the purple region, it is harder for me to tell. I think right here with the contrast up, some of this feels a little more black and this maybe, maybe. I'm having trouble, there's definitely some warmer, okay, like right here, I would say that this is deep purple. And then that one looks more black super super subtle difference because we're talking about a saturated color so there's almost like a little bit more red to that region than the one next to it again hard to say and with the purple specifically it was really hard to see where i was placing the speckles when i was doing it and so there are definitely some that feel slightly more purple but that contrast is it is way more subtle than it was with the blue so on the pink, the Cabernet doesn't really have very much as much contrast. The black has a lot of contrast, but I'm struggling to find as much of the Cabernet as I thought there was. Yeah, I think that the, the Cabernet on here is sort of giving an overall deep patch, but there isn't a ton of contrast with the pink. And so we're not really seeing it pop in the same way. Now, I think that this color on color is adding dimension. Like there are areas where our purple, some of it feels almost a bit deeper and a bit brighter. And some of that could have been that way we layered the color on. Uh, but when it comes to seeing the, the dark version and the black, it really is the navy that is the most successful and had the most contrast. Uh, between those colors. I was pulling a few more skeins to lay it out and here I can see that was it Cabernet and the black very very clearly so it probably may vary a bit from batch to batch. Did I need to use seven different colors, seven different premixed colors for this colorway? No, definitely not. I absolutely could have gotten away with something that would have felt very very similar just using four colors. Was it cheating? No, because I did technically use seven different colors. It's just some of them had more of an impact than others. And if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this in any conclusions, but tonight is the seventh night of Hanukkah for the Chemnitz Hanukkah special. And so therefore I used seven premixed colors. Can you imagine what's coming up tomorrow night? <laughs> On a more serious note, I am really happy with where I ended up and someday I will play around with the original inspiration I had using a lot of different premixed colors to create a more variated colorway, but this feels more me and more my style and so I'm happy that I shifted my vision because this worked great. 
But now I need to go twist all these up into their proper minis. For our first two yarn mops, I used all seven colors on each one. And I think here, with the exception of maybe the deep purple, which maybe feels a little bit similar to Cabernet, I mean, I kind of see it in there. You can pretty much see all of the different colors. For the final two yarn mops, I did something a little differently. I have one skein where I used just the three brights and another where I used just the four dark shades. And I thought that, wow, this actually makes a really pretty kind of fade set. Ooh, fade sets of yarn mops, anyone? Ooh, <laughs> that's an idea. But anyway, uh, I just thought it would be fun to share that contrast uh, that you can get just based on the colors that you use with the same technique. I mean, these are all different yarn bases. These two are Swish, these two are Stroll, but I mean, maybe I'll have to do something like this for summer. Of course, I already have an idea of what I want to do for the 2022 Summer Mini Skin Mini Series, but that this this could still work. Waha! Uh -huh. And here is all of our twisted yarn. You might notice a very aesthetically pleasing pattern to the way I twisted these. I twisted them all up the same way, which really helps them feel a lot more similar to one another. And it makes some of the variation between the skeins a little less obvious, at least at the moment. If I zoom in a bit more, you can see some are brighter, especially with respect to the pink. Some have a few more pastel patches. There's unquestionably some dye lot differences, although I'm not entirely sure if it has to do with batch pan to pan or just group of 10 to group of 10. That also could really impact things. But uh, twisting your skeins the same way, so always starting with um, it folded in half with the purples in the middle and all the pink together or all the blue together really is a nice way to help make things feel very consistent. Uh, if I twisted them each in a very random way, then it could be harder to tell uh, that the skeins were all dyed in the same way because there'd be more variation in how they looked twisted up. Yeah, I don't think that this is often the way that I would choose. If this was a full skein, I would probably try to twist it in a way that would mix up the purple, blue, and pink a little bit more on the skein. But for the minis, this was a very consistent way to do it. And I mean, I really, really like the overall effect. It really is so much fun to dye up mini skeins of yarn. It's a really great way to play around with different types of techniques that then are really easy for you to go and swatch and get a feel for what kind of colorways do you like working with the most? Do you like something like these, which are a little more repeating, or do you prefer something where the colors are more randomly placed so you don't get sort of any kind of pattern with what you're knitting or crocheting? And I know a lot of people have a lot of preferences, uh, but that's a reason why I try to include a lot of different types of colorways in these Hanukkah samplers so that way people can swatch and play and explore and figure out what you might want to create. The one thing that's always an important reminder is that these mini skeins are a bit shorter than full skeins come from the mill, from Wool to Die For, or other berry yarn companies. And so therefore, uh, if I was gonna go repeat this exact same colorway on full skeins, it would knit up a little bit differently because the color sections would have different sizes. So tell me, did you figure out the loose theme I was using for these Hanukkah videos? I thought it would be fun to both challenge myself to use uh, multiple colors that I have in my crayon box of acid dyes uh, for every night. And I really hope that you've enjoyed watching me challenge myself to play with all of these premixed colors, including my custom mux mixture that I created from mixing all 40 Jacquard acid dyes together. <laughs> so yes, it's a premixed color. So that was one color for night one. Now tonight's colorway, again, I don't know if you would look at this and say, gee, you could use seven colors to make this, but on closer inspection, you can see some of the depth that you get from doing that. And I think it is a fun 
mostly repeating colorway. So I really hope that you like it. And this is another reminder that it is okay to have a vision that you really like and you're excited by, but it's also okay to take that vision and shift it into something else. Whether you think it would be hard to achieve what you're going for and so you think maybe you'd be disappointed by the outcome, or you come up with another idea that you're more excited about. You can have a plan in mind when you're developing a new colorway and then just completely scrap it once you get going. So never be afraid to listen to your gut and to have fun with the colors that you're creating. Are you subscribed to the Cabinet Tutorials YouTube channel yet? If not, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe. It really does help the content here. And while you're at it, turn on notifications. If you've been following my content for a while and want another way to help support the channel, I do have a Patreon. Chemnitz patrons can get early access to new content every month and some behind the scenes sneak peeks. Go and check out patreon.com slash Chemnitz for more information. You can also find a link down in the video description. So now that you know my Hanukkah theme, my vision, my plan, what on earth do you think I am going to do tomorrow night? I know from joining the live chat for some of these premieres that some of you have been really good at predicting what I might be doing next. So I am speaking to you and I am very curious to hear what you think will come out tomorrow night. So I will see you back here at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time for Hanukkah night eight. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.